Andretti, son. Andretti, son. Watch out, move. Oh, oh, oh. Yo! What just happened? What just happened? Oh my god. <laughs> How long I gonna take a break? I have to take a break. That was crazy. That was crazy. This game is trying to kill me. What is the deal, beautiful people? It's your boy Ramon, also known as Uncle Reza on the sticks. Uh, this review will be on both channels, Lifestyles and Ignorant Gamers. So make sure you check out the other if you have not done so already. Links in the description below. Project Cars, round of applause. Get on your living room couch. Get on your roof. Stand on your space station if you have one because this game is dope. This is definitely a next generation uh a next generation video game, a next generation racing game, something that we could all love. So I've I've been playing it for a while. I got a hold of one of the the, the preview builds actually, and I thought it was dope as shit. A little rough around the edges, but here's the final versions finally out. Let's talk about what was delivered. So Project Cars is a very interesting, uh, <laughs> very interesting concept. This is not a Need for Speed. Uh, there are no storyline plots or so cops and robbers. This is not a Gran Turismo, uh, Gran Turismo Six or Five or whatever, whatever your favorite Gran Turismo is. There is not twelve hundred cars in this in this game, and there is not a bunch of parts you can slap on, so on and so forth. And it's not a Forza. You know, there there is nowhere close to the amount of cars in Forza. Uh, and in fact, there's only about fifty cars in Project Cars. And uh, there is no community of painters and no community of tuners. And so this this thing has a life of its own. So let's get into the, the meat and potatoes of what makes this game Project Cars, what gives it its, you know, sort of its own identity. I think the one that stands out by far is the graphics. Man, this game is beautiful. And I, I, I don't know how else to say it. The game is just beautiful. And that's even coming down the line from the monster PC version to the PS4 running at 1080p and then the Xbox running at 900p upscaled. Uh, whatever, whatever version of this game you play, it's going to be beautiful. I, I was shocked uh, run, running it on the, the PS... I'm sorry, running it on the Xbox uh, how how awesome the graphics were in comparison to the uh to the the pc and i'm not saying that they were, the graphics were close i'm saying they were good i really expected a terrible a terrible conversion but it held up you, you know the the cars are exceptionally well detailed uh, uh, you know with the damage model that's in the game you can you can damage these cars and strip fenders off and uh, something like a grid or maybe like a dirt if you're used to that you, you can see the roll cages inside and you know all the cockpit views are rendered really nice right down to the helmet view which i really enjoy uh it's a little hard to race in that view for now but you know, i i definitely do enjoy it the tracks are beautiful uh they just they did a hell of a job on the graphics man this is definitely the best looking racing game on the market and uh you know, it this happens. These games leapfrog each other as as they come out. But I think Project Cars definitely set the bar for the next generation graphics and what it should be. Now, in terms of sound, oh my God! Okay, mate, focus on the lights. Nothing else matters now. Let's get a clean getaway and defend that whole position.
game sounds amazing. I mean, there's there's so much there's so much work that went into the the way the cars sound, and it's quite frankly it's addicting. I I mean, I find myself playing with the throttle a lot more than I should at the detriment to my lap times, but it's just such an addictive sound, man. You know, uh, my favorite sounding car is probably the the GT3 M3. Oh my god, I love the way that thing screams, but you know, everything from the go-karts to that annoying buzz to the, they, they've got a V8 in here, the Mustang, uh, that one sounds monstrous, and then you've got your all-out race cars, everything just sounds nice, you know, it's, man, it's dope, but that, that in itself really sort of segues into one of the downsides of the game where, uh, and, and I want to be careful on this point. I'm not saying that racing games should have two, three hundred cars. Uh, there's definitely enough cars in this game that you'll enjoy it for time to come. And I, I think Grid was was living proof of that. You know, there weren't many cars in Grid, but it was a great selection of cars. Here, uh, the selection is, is not as good. Uh, but it, it, that in itself takes some thought. Because if you if you look at uh, and well this is the next point the career mode if you look at what makes this game uh, a true simulator it's not about the physics the graphics the sounds it's about the concept around racing and competition and the type of racing you're doing so that concept first and then the cars second so you've got your road cars you've got GT uh, GT three GT four You've got a lot of Formula One cars in there. There's even a NASCAR. Only one, by the way. I wish they would have uh, they would have put another two or so, just for variety. Uh, you got your prototype racers. So, I think the variety of cars you have to look at it from the standpoints of the type of races the game offers. But still, it's hard not to play this game and you know with these beautiful graphics and this incredible sound. And not say, okay, where's the Fari? <laughs> you know, let, let me get a Fari in here. I want to hear how that sounds. I, I need to hear that. You know, it's it's just something I can't ignore. And and even so, coming coming back down the line, I, I would have loved to see like a Skyline somewhere in here. A Supra, you know, regular everyday cars. And I get it. Um, this, this really has no bearing on the points of the overall review because that's just not the type of game it is. But damn, I can wish. I can dream. It would have been so nice. So when you talk about the career, uh, there's, a, there's a few things that's really dope about the career. And one that will stand out is it's not really a linear path. They don't force you to to do race A to get to race B to C. You have total freedom in the type of races you want to do when you first start the game. Uh, and I think that's dope uh, because of that. All the cars in the game are immediately accessible. Nothing's locked. You don't need to do any crazy any crazy achievements to get cars. So I think it, I also think that's a good thing. But for me, the career mode is what makes this game a simulator. It's it's really what what gives it its identity. So for instance, if you pick like a GT a GT3 race or what have you, some of those races got some very strict restrictions. And the key word here is restrictions. All of these classes and these, these different races, they all have restrictions. So you may get into a race where uh, the restrictions require you to pit once or you'll be disqualified. Like that's super dope. So it's a seven lap race. And sure, you can be blowing the computer out, but you got to pit. You have to pit. And and that really introduces a fair bit of strategy. And, and that's, I mean, that's real life business right there. I really, really like that. And then for each race, you've got like two qualifiers. Uh, actually, you've got the practice where you can, the practice race is, I guess it goes however long you want until you're ready. And you're supposed to take that opportunity to to dial in your car for the track. You're supposed to, you know, get familiar with the track learn the track, figure out how your car behaves, and, and make adjustments in the tuning section. And then you've got the qualifier. I don't quite see why there are two qualifiers. Some some of these things have two qualifiers for each race. I think one is enough. But the, the point of a qualifier is pretty much you get out there and you set your lap time down. 
whatever lap time you get, that's what determines the position you start in the real race. So if you get the fastest lap time uh, in a qualifier, then you start number one in the race. And vice versa, if you get the slowest lap time, the slowest lap time, you will start last in the race. <laughs> so it becomes it, it becomes very important to do the qualifier, you know, do the practice, first of all, to get familiar with the track and then do the qualifier to earn a proper position in the real race so you don't have to fight through the pack. Uh, that's pretty dope. That simulation right there. I think that's the best part of it. Uh, you know, I don't think there's much else out there that's ever done this. I could be wrong. I haven't been paying, a simu paying attention to simulators on the market for a long time. But this is definitely the first like it that hit the console. So I'm very happy about that. And uh, then there's the tuning. You know, you can you can tune your setups and... There, there aren't too many available options. It's not like it's not as in depth as a Forza or a Gran, Gran Turismo, but it's got a good deal, of, a good deal of settings that actually do have, <laughs> like, do have a bearing on the car. So it would be worth your while if you're gonna dive into this game and in the career to learn what the hell's going on with your car, and uh, you know, even hit the forums and find find the best setups. For, for the best tracks, so on and so forth. Uh, again, that that's what gives this game the identity that it has. It's this super simulation game. Then it's the tracks itself. I swear to you, there's like 100 tracks in this game. <laughs> there's a lot of tracks. I, I mean, whatever your favorite track is in real life, it's probably here. And, and that's, that's saying a lot. Uh, I really do enjoy the selection of tracks here. But what I have noticed, and keeping with that super simulation... Uh, theme that project cars has not all cars are meant to be driven on <laughs> on all tracks you know you take something like any of those gt those gt3 cars or gt4 cars or even a formula car and you put it on that cali track and it becomes really difficult to have fun <laughs> It, it's so hard the cars is bouncing all over the place like these race cars aren't meant for road for road tracks you get what i mean and that that's a very real thing in real life right? so there's there's a lot to be said about that that i really you know i really enjoy and that's going back to uh to my point where i wish there were more regular road cars in the game but nonetheless the tracks are dope the tracks are beautiful. Uh, you know, a lot of the tracks got the sun ray thing going on where the you see the beams from the sun coming through the trees. It's very beautiful. Uh, the night racing is amazing. Uh, and and you can you can do things like speed up the time so you can put it up to like 60 X. So on a race on a, of about 10, 10, 15 minutes, you can actually go through like a. Uh, a 24-hour period where you see it turns from night to day back to night again and you go through dusk and dawn it's it's really dope man i really enjoy it and then there were some races where you know we were fucking around and and we we, we mashed up the car pretty much and we didn't have lights and then the nighttime cycle came and <laughs> it got real it got real really quick so, yeah, there's a lot to be said for that as well. Uh, dope execution on the tracks. The weather in this game. Oh, my God. It is beautiful. Uh, not only is it beautiful, it definitely has an effect on on how the, the pace of the race changes and how it goes. And it has an effect on how you drive, how you brake, so on and so forth. So, I, I, the weather is dope. The weather is really dope. I, I really like what they did with it. You know, there's fog, heavy fog. There's haze. There's a thunderstorm. There's light rain, heavy rain. There's a mix between fog and rain. Uh, it's it's good stuff. The only thing I wish there was, uh, they added some snow. It would have been nice to add some snow in there. <laughs> Not the IGZ snow, but snow, snow. Wait, IGZ snow is snow, snow. Huh. <laughs> So yeah, they did a great job with that, uh, but but I want to say this game uh, when I got it on the Xbox, uh, I got to really sit down and play it. It started to fall apart really quick, 
<laughs> really, really quick. Like, I mean, this shit broke my heart. You know, I've been I've been playing it on the PC from day one, and, and then I continue with the shipped version on the PC, and uh, it was a rock solid game. It is a rock solid game, and then I I move over to the Xbox, and and shit just sucks. I, I mean, there's frame rate issues, uh, depending on what track you're on, and that's such an annoying thing to say. And it's even more annoying to realize that some tracks are just made better than others. Can't figure it out. And I've never noticed it on the PC version because I've got some God graphics card and it really does, it doesn't matter. But on the Xbox version, you know, you can get 20 cars on one track and put the same 20 cars on another. And the game just starts to crawl. The experience goes to shit. So annoying. So annoying. I mean, there's sound issues on the Xbox version. You know, if I'm if I'm in a, a career, if I'm online, or even even if I'm doing like my career, but I'm in the party with the with the IGZ boys, every time I break, I can't hear. No, I can hear them, but whenever I break in the game, like if I'm coming to a corner and I I apply the brakes, people can't hear what I'm saying. Only when I break. What the fuck is that? And people people on the forums, a lot of suggestions say, oh, turn off forced feedback. And that fixes that issue. Like, it does not fix that issue. I can't play a racing game without forced feedback. Like, what is this, 1992? No. Forced feedback is a part of the game. Fix that shit. Then there's a, another even more annoying part that uh, I haven't played it on the PlayStation 4. But from the forums, I could tell the PlayStation guys aren't having nearly as much problems as the Xbox guys. And uh, the PlayStation does this dope thing where the the voice notes of your instructor, you know, when you crash, you say, hey, bring your punk ass back to the pit or, you know, whatever. Whatever these guys say over the radio, the race radio, it comes through the PlayStation controller. I think that's super dope. So... Obviously, these guys went the extra mile to take use of the console-specific features, except on the Xbox. What am I talking about? Rumble triggers. Rumble triggers is a big deal to me in Forza 5. And it's, it's such of a big deal that when I play another racing game that doesn't have it, I notice it. You know, that, that little extra feedback that comes from when you're locking up your brakes or you're accelerating, you're losing traction in the triggers is a big deal and it's not working in project cars on the xbox it's that's annoying then there's the the xbox live lobbies it's completely shit you can't search for certain game types with certain uh certain specifications uh the playstation version has the playstation and the pc version has more options online than the xbox version like I'm just left scratching my head here. Like, what the fuck is this? You, you get what I mean? Like, that's that's so shitty that it's it's almost like they just never played the Xbox version. If you can't get it right, then don't ship it. Like, delay it or something. Like, it was. It's just ridiculous what was going on in the console. There's random game freezes, and that's across both consoles. Uh, party chat issues for both consoles. The frame rate thing applies to both consoles, less on the PS4, admittedly. And it's it's just a clusterfuck of things, man. I, and I wish, yeah, uh, you know what? Here's here's one thing when I, I'm talking about multiplayer. Uh, there is no way to turn off collisions, and collisions is a, a big deal online because there's a lot of jackasses that get in the game and they just drive backwards and they ruin it for everyone. And you you go through this the first three weeks three four weeks of the game when they disappear right but there should still be a way to turn off collisions because if we're on a track and we're competing seriously everybody wants to get that line and you don't want collisions to slow you down so when you're when you're when you're hot lapping it's it's good to have collisions off but you know a lot of fundamental things that that weren't addressed here and it's really heartbreaking that they fucked up the xbox version the way it is uh, I I just don't 
<laughs> there isn't much to be said there. It just is what it is, and it fucking sucks. Now, the final breaking point for this game applies to the console, the console version, where they they did not take the time to to tune the controller, and I think that is extra shitty. Now, don't get me wrong. This game is a super simulator, yes. In fact, I would have respected them more if they just put on the cover of the game, don't try it without a steering wheel. Because then I can understand. I know what I'm going in for. If you tell me you made this game and you made it specifically for a steering wheel, it'll work with a controller, but don't do that. I can respect it. Now I have nothing to bitch about. Because this is your vision. It's your game. You made it how you want. And... If I'm gonna play it, then I need to I need to abide by by those concepts. No, no such thing. So I get it. You gotta fend for yourself on the PC version. That's that's why you know I did that video up there with the controller settings on PC, and it's playable. I thought it was dope. Uh, <laughs> but on the consoles, no, unacceptable. This game should have been launched with developer approved settings for the controllers and i i'm standing firm on that i get it it's dope that you've got a million and one options in there more than any other racing game we've seen on the console sure fine applause to you but this shit has to feel right and then if we think that it could be a little better then we go in and we scale back or turn up those options you don't fucking leave us to fend for ourselves. Speaking of which, after the review, I'm going to do a video where I, I pretty much go through the options and show you how I'm running the game with the best controller settings and, and other settings as well. So watch out for that. But yeah, I, I think that's a that's definitely a game breaker. This game is, is definitely, I am 100% sure this game is God mode with a steering wheel. And I'm looking to purchase a steering wheel because of this game. Uh, but... This is not this is not how it's supposed to be. Uh, you make a game on consoles, then you need to you need to optimize that experience, or it's just fucked. So, what do I think about Project Cars? I love this game for what it is. I, I mean, as a car guy, uh, as a racing racing car guy, racing video game guy, I this game is this is it. You know, it's it's not as perfect as I would want it to be in terms of the the offering of cars, uh, but what it does have it's so dope the tuning is not as extensive as i would like but it's still really dope there's not any of the forza elements where there's a community around tunes and and liveries and so on and so forth but it's still dope the career mode knocked it out of the ballpark the freedom to pick what you want the you know the technicality of the different restrictions or requirements on races knocked it out of the ballpark Graphics, sound, knocked it out of the ballpark. All of that on the console version goes out the fucking door. And I think it's a fucking shame. Like, I will not recommend this game on the console. I simply will not. And I don't know how fast these guys are working to patch it. And, you know, in, in hindsight, it's acceptable from a small developer. Because I feel like in terms of the entire package on the console... They got about 60% of the way. And that's an impressive achievement given the fact that the PC version is rock solid. But, you know, there's still a lot going on. Like, they should be taking advantage of the Xbox Live servers. They should be they should be doing a lot more dope shit like they did on the PS4 with the controller. There's a lot of... of, uh, <laughs> of niceties that come along with development for the console and i feel like they're not taking advantage of much of it and it's a shame so if you if you're really a car guy that's your thing uh i would recommend it to you but if you're you know you're on a pc yes you gotta get it and make sure you get a wheel if you're in a console the xbox one the ps4 and you're not a hardcore uh, racing guy don't buy this fucking game. I, you know, it would be so dope for you to experience what a true simulator is, but not a, not like this, not like this. Too many issues, too many bugs. The forms are riddled with bugs and and complaints. It's it's a mess right now. I don't know if they'll ever get it right. 
uh, I because I've seen a, <laughs> you look at you look at games like uh, Titanfall. They got it right, but that's EA. You look at games like Battlefield Four. They still can't get that right. So, what chance does the little developer like Slightly Mad Studios have to actually get it right? And I'm not saying they're not working on these issues, but you know, you got to show and prove. So let's let's see what happens. Maybe in the future, uh, another month or two from now, if they can get it right. I would recommend it with with that strong, strong asterisk at the top. Make sure you get a steering wheel or know what you're in for. But uh, right now, stay clear with the console version, goddammit. It's your boy, Uncle Rizza. I'm out of here. Peace.